so to make sure I haven't misunderstood it, uh, can you like just like lay out your understanding of it? Um, uh, well, okay, so I'll tell you what Little Timmy is, but again, this isn't my only reason. For, I understand, yeah. Um, all right, so Little Timmy is basically um, it, when white people become a minority. So like right now, if um, you know a white person was in a classroom where it was all like black people or all like mixed, um, that they wouldn't be awarded the same kind of protections that you know minorities right now face because of our history and just there's a lot of anti-white rhetoric that's been going on mm -hmm. and you know teaching critical race theory and just like hammering like this stuff like what we've gone through in this country mm -hmm. slavery jim crow people are not going to be as sympathetic to the white person as they are to the people that have gone through all those things mm -hmm. on the other end so the minorities right now are the ones who have gone through all the fucked up things in this country so people are a bit more sympathetic to that mm -hmm. that's not going to be awarded to white people so when that happens and it's going to happen mm -hmm. um there, it's it's not gonna be good for little timmy <laughs> it's not yeah. gonna be good for little timmy yeah um okay so i think i can bring a I'm gonna let you two iron this out. I right, do gotta let my dog, the dog right. out, but appreciate it. Appreciate it, Rose. Thanks for taking yes. bro. Brittany and Todd, Please. I'll try and be on next week. Uh, is uh, drinking chat still? All right. right? I'll let you know. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Look forward. Right. Hell yeah. All right. Peace. Uh, I think there's a, a good, uh, a very analogous example that can be employed here to like illustrate an outcome that perhaps may look even more doomed when you look at like the history and the actual like stuff that happened when it came to the treatment of specific individuals within, for example, like for example, like the classroom setting that you talk about when you teach like slavery and Creek or race here and the rest of it. And here is where my, um, you know, my experience of being a, being a Eurocock is, is very beneficial here. Um, but if you talk about the education uh, about, you know, Nazi Germany and World War II, it's mm -hmm. very specifically has to do with, you know, like German people, you know, Nazis and shit like that. You know, it was very recent. It was more recent than slavery uh, than, you know, like Jim Crow. It's, it's substantially, well, not necessarily Jim Crow because that took like a while, but definitely slavery, which is like the, one of the driving points there. It's definitely a lot more specialized than just like the white identity because the white identity is very broad. Germans are a very specific group of people that if anything, it would make them more prone to like be discriminated against specifically. Um, in addition to that, it is far, far, far more like white thoughts. Like it, like learning about World War II, especially here in Europe, is Are you like talking about like with Jews and stuff. Uh, yeah, like Nazi Germany, but, right? The the okay, Germans they, there and the, the terrible atrocities that they committed. I don't, I don't know if you can really compare the that to Little Timmy because with there's a lot of like white Jew, like you can't really tell that they're Jewish. No, no, so I'm talking like, about the treatment of Germans in classrooms. Oh, okay. Wait, because okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Sorry, because they were the ones that that you know, I mean, it was the Germans that committed these atrocities. World War II was more okay, recent. How, how can you tell who's German though? Oh, and like in, in here in uh, here in like Europe, you do, like in the United States, there's a lot of like you talk about like white, this person's white, this person's white, this person's Hispanic, or whatever. Here in in Europe, uh, everyone talks about their nationality. Like people just know each other's nationalities. Like they don't say, oh, you know, I'm white. People okay. ask like, where are you from? Oh, you say Sweden, you say Denmark, okay. you say Germany, or whatever. It's very very um, well known. Like typically, who in the class? Okay, would but be. like in, in an instance where I think you're going with this, mm -hmm. where um the per they would be the minority, um they wouldn't have to be sitting there and talking about where they're from like maybe that's like happening right now but i don't imagine if there's a situation that you're trying to lead to mm -hmm. um that they would be advertising it whereas with um white people and black people and you know like actual like racial uh, elements you can see no matter what mm -hmm. who they are <laughs> Yeah, so you're, you're, I guess the thing you're saying here is that when teaching about World War II, people don't specifically point out, oh, this person's German, and da 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 It's all visual, this mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I mean, they could be um, white and Jewish, they can be, but like, it's it's all just what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, that could be part of it. I think that this is, there's like a large divide because I could very like easily say that, hey, if I'm, you know, if I'm in a classroom here in Europe, it is, it's like it's abundantly obvious it's one of the like the core parts of somebody's like identity and who they are like where they come from specifically because that's the way like people like differentiate themselves uh here in europe absolutely so it's it's a very like big part specifically um here in europe but even if you if you were to like you know pick away a bit at the the you know the appearance straight from the from the um from the white side of things number one do you believe that that's like the most significant aspect that is leading into this and number two um there is definitely like plenty of examples of maybe like like white immigrants that wouldn't have you know themselves per se done you know like slavery been around in the united states during jim crow or stuff like that that could also be you know 
put into that analogy as opposed to little Timmy, who I assumed is like a person who's been in America for quite a while for several, several generations and the rest of it. Wait, so you're asking, um, wait, can you repeat that last part about, uh, repeat that last part for me again? Sorry. Yeah. So, um, for instance, if we're like, if we're, we're going to like pick away at the, the German side of things with like, oh, it's not like as, as abundantly obvious that you're part of that specific group, right. uh, by virtue of you being German, which once again, I would contest because it's, it's very, it's very prevalent here in Europe. That's like a key identifier. Um, then can you also apply sort of like the same standard to, um, parts of uh you know like people in america so for example there might be a white kid that's like moved here like there might be a first generation immigrant moved here from some part in europe that don't have family that lived during slavery that lived during jim crow and you know were part and built into those institutions as well uh from my understanding little timmy would be someone that's been in america for generations right uh no, and that has like roots here that's, white. that's just that's it, the end of it yeah that's it yeah i think little timmy is anybody that's white mm -hmm. um because that, again it's this is all a visual thing people are not going to really sit there and ask you what your history is and what how like did your parents own slaves or like mm -hmm. they're not doing that it's just there's this like animosity towards white people that is like been going and it's building up like and it's getting worse and um why don't you think yeah, there's the same animosity have... towards german people here in europe yeah, but like the thing is the difference like okay see so the difference with this um is the history of what has happened to minorities is so long it's so much longer it's been like freaking going on um throughout our entire history and let's it seems like you know the second that they can that they might finally have that like power to um you know fight back that they're gonna they're gonna take that chance <laughs> like mm -hmm. and it's not and nobody's I mean gonna be I could Nobody very easily sorry make for the white person that yeah. um I mean I could very easily make arguments for that like reasoning behind why like Germans would be fucking hated today in Europe. So number one, it was extraordinarily like it was super, super recently, like like the peak of like the the, the terrible atrocities that the you know like Germans would have committed uh, occurred in like the ninth for like literal concentration camps and the peak of the slavery. Yeah, thing you was... can't even allege the two really. I mean yeah, I think that's I think I don't think you can put four hundred years into 40 years right, or 60 years from post Holocaust or post World War. I don't think so personally, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you go back. Mm -hmm. Hey, remember once you take the red pill, you can't get unread. <laughs> so, anyway, right. that, that didn't watch the movie, obviously. Go ahead. Yeah, but it's not, so, this isn't my only reasoning too. Yeah. I, I understand this is not your only reasoning, but there is that, there is the fact that like people like, you know, there are people's grandparents that may be alive today that literally experienced this type of shit, you know, like people that have been directly adversely affected by this specific, like, you know, societal group and the type of education we receive on like World War II and Sweden is extremely like deliberate it's very well focused it's often like you learn about this and practically like every year going forward to differing extents it's always like a hyper prominent part of any educational curriculum and in a system like here in europe where it's abundantly obvious who would be you know german so to say in a class because it's something that's easily you know talked about and differentiated the reason it's, why we it see it's talked about though you keep saying that it's talked about that's something that maybe doesn't have to be talked about then if that's going to be the case <laughs> wait what, what what isn't something that needs to be talked about I'm saying that, like, people, you keep talking about, like, oh, yeah, everybody talks about that they're German or they're this or they're that, like, yeah. and, like, if you're, if the scenario you're trying to portray here is that, okay, well, now all of a sudden they're going to come after Germans, then I highly doubt that those Germans are going to be advertising that they're German. Um... <sighs> Sure, but now we have kind of like the, the, the causal chains reversed, right? So you're sort of like, you know, like assuming that, okay, people wouldn't want to advertise their German by virtue of the fact that they would like receive like disparate treatment from it, should that be the case. Mm -hmm. But I can right. very easily make the other argument as well. And this is kind of where I'm going to get that, you know, with this, that it is absolutely possible to teach about historical atrocities that may have been committed by one specific social group in a way that is responsible, in a way that is, you know, educational, sure. and is in a way that doesn't encourage, like, discrimination by any means towards people in existing classrooms that may have been part of that social group, so to say. So I ask you, is there, do you believe that there's, like, a significant difference between, let's say that the, these things were both taught in terrible ways, between a German kid sitting in a class in Europe where basically everyone's going to know that they're German and everyone's going to might like, you know, give them looks, for instance, where you talk about, you know, the Nazi rule in a very negative way and a white person in an American classroom where you talk about slavery. Do you well, think yeah, that there's I like think... a significance differences like between? Yeah, if they're, they're going to know 
that yeah, I'd say that they were in a classroom with all Jews or something, and there was that um, you know that one German like uh, Nazi descendant or whatever. Um, I'm sure that can maybe be um, portrayed as like the same thing as like being in a classroom. And we basically have that right because you have people from all across Europe in the same classroom, and Nazi Germany fucked up Europe. They committed like terrible atrocities when it comes to the construction of like concentration camps and bombings and all the rest of it. The reason it's just not it's not the same is like be, it's just because um it's the visual thing and like even if people are like talking i don't think that they're completely outnumbered in that sense and um it, it just nice it, it doesn't it doesn't translate at all like in germans are probably talking. more likely to be a minority within a classroom than a, a white person is to be within yeah. like the minority within a classroom it's still i just still don't think it's going to be the same like there's been this like power like that is that white people have had over you know the minorities in this country for so long and it's just and they've never been able to get up from under it and there you can see it right now it's already happening where mm -hmm. like uh there's some like there's a lot of like anger and rage um that has been coming and it's like festering and people are are they're they're fueling that fire like mm -hmm. You could probably you could draw comparisons to that with Germany as well, right? Germany is literally the dominant country in Europe when it comes to trade influence, when it comes to being an economic superpower, when it comes to being the leader of the European Germany, Union. Germany also um, started did, did a lot to uh, undo the things that they they did. You know, they um, there's not like any of those Hitler statues. They made sure to like really ramp down on like hate speech, and reparations, reparations. We didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. Like they, so, like the Jews are not really like. A, they're not, it, you're not, it doesn't have to be just the way, Jews. It can be like people. literally any other European, uh, like that's not maybe like Italian, I guess, you know? Yeah, I just don't think it, I just don't think it um, works the same. So the, the key distinction for you is that you believe that even in a, a, okay, do you believe me when I say that in Europe, um, like practically everybody has an idea where like everybody's from when it comes to like nationality do you Not believe sure. me when I, say yeah, that? I, don't, I mean i'm guessing like you're, I'm, right. you're saying that so, so maybe. You, you, but you still believe there's a significant difference between a a, a sp specifically on like the identification aspect but uh, when it comes to like the, the visual aspect of stuff between a european classroom where are everybody those, knows somebody's german and a, a classroom in which people can see that somebody's are white those, are those people still suffering though that were suffering back then um, you could make like long-term argument when it comes to like reparations and building back up from like World War II. Um, and when it comes to the fact that Germany still ended up on top, even after all of that, and some other countries still aren't doing well, especially if, if you talk about the European Union right now, there's a lot of distrust the within it. That black people um, have to go through in our country. Uh, I mean, it won't be exactly the same. No, I, I'm obviously going to grant that, but I think it's, it's definitely like sufficiently comparable to make some form of comparison here and the, the the key thing that i'm trying to get is that you can absolutely like teach these things in a way that isn't going to carry with it you know all these negative consequences because i can easily imagine some like fucking like shitty teacher uh teaching about world war ii in an extremely terrible way that's going to lead to people being bigoted as fuck towards like their the, the german people in their class um, like depending on how they talk about it. I can easily easily see that happening but you know we this is a bit of my Euro supremacy coming up here we do have typically like better standards of education and better teaching practices I would say so we see less yeah. of that happening so what, what I'm kind of getting at here is that do you not believe that this is less of a an inevitability and uh, it like and is instead something that could potentially happen assuming that we don't run the education like correctly or in a productive way I'm thinking that basically if we're go if we keep going on the path that we're going on because the anger's already there. The anger and the rage is already there. The only thing that would need to happen is the numbers being there. And as the numbers happen, that's what I worry about. So what indications can you see like like right now of uh, of like like POC or minority people like like violently fighting back against um look at, look at the summer riots that happened. Sure, and ninety seven percent of like those protests that were fundamentally, you know, protesting systemic inequalities existing within the United States of America were perfectly peaceful. It was a small minority yeah. of them no, that ended up being with the Holocaust. <laughs> listen, no, and I'm not trying to JQ or do anything, but listen uh -huh. to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. America is so unique. And you know what the answer is? Minorities get treated like shit. That is the one thing in history that 
the minority gets treated like shit. So when white people become the minority, they will be treated like shit. And I'm telling you that as a POC, I'm not going to have any sympathy. So wouldn't the solution plight? Wouldn't the solution to the like to this be to like actually combat the poor treatment of minorities instead of trying to control who yeah, is the I minority? Think that, I think that that would be a good thing as well. I think we have been. So then why Since does it matter? 65. Why does it matter that little Timmy Since is like white, right, for instance? Though. Like. Well, because if that's like that, you're you're asking. You just you're, answered your own question. Yeah, you were asking to um, try to change the way ev- the entire country thinks. It's like that's your ask. It's a huge ask to do. Um, and there's no even if we so, like started doing what you're saying right mm-hmm. now, I still don't think that's going to undo the mindset that people are in as of now. But you still have like I, I don't see that that rage that you're talking about when we look at the numbers when we look at the, the like the, the, these like nationwide protests like the vast 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 majority of them were perfectly peaceful if this was this violent mob just waiting to enact like force upon like whitey we would have seen a fuckload more of like hate crimes and deaths and destruction in a higher like per capita sense than what we did see during the summer what about when they were chanting are there white people in the crowd I have that video, and if I show it to you, maybe you didn't see it. Sure. And what if I okay? If I if I show people. you like yeah, I guess they, Charlottesville I guess footage, if you were part like... of that three percent. Again, if it doesn't affect you until you are part of that three percent. So you can tell me that ninety-seven percent of whatever happened was good when you become the three percent. That's going to change. Listen, I'm not. I have a very unique. Uh, I'm just telling you from a from a minority. I'm not going to care when white people become the minority. I'm not going to say, oh, boo-hoo, whitey. I'm not. That's just going to happen. True, but the thing is, is like that argument fundamentally rests on a presupposition that this is going to be something that's common. This is going to be something that's hyper widespread, right? And that specifically is going to be something affecting or like afflicting like white Americans. And that is in itself a a worse sort of like uh, something worse than what is currently occurring to, for example, existing minority groups. Otherwise, no, I think 16, otherwise the arguments wouldn't be exactly like centered. That. Otherwise, the sixty nineteen has nothing to do with this. Otherwise, the argument wouldn't be centered or around. Doesn't? <laughs> not right now um like the the argument should then wouldn't be centered around oh what happens if the person minority right now is white and it would be centered around hey we should do our very best towards eliminating like disparate treatment towards like minorities right now as they exist and then we doesn't matter who is a minority group right they will be treated with respect to no matter who they are that's your question so do you one is um do you think that black people can be racist oh yeah absolutely okay and the other question is do you think that there is no anti-white rhetoric going on I believe that it exists. Sure, definitely. So, okay. So, if you know that this is going, I don't know. I'm, who do you think is pushing a lot of the anti-white rhetoric? Too. Uh, I think it's mostly like dumb fuck teenagers on TikTok and Twitter. <laughs> I don't like, I mean, it's I see it like everywhere on social media, and then like there was a whole thing where um. Yes, but social you know, media is social media, right? It's not no, but like social media is pretty freaking powerful. Like, yeah. it is pretty powerful and the social media is targeting young people mm-hmm. that's the that's the target so those are the people that are growing and they're up also with- coincidentally that type of people that would be most affected by positive education yeah they should be yeah i would love and talk- negative and negative sure you you nobody's arguing for negative education negative. i've been on taking it no 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 because listen after January 6th, I got booted to Telegram, and I was like, you know, Facebook, right? I shouldn't have been on Facebook. Anyway, no, listen, I'm going to say there's some extreme shit out there, brother. There's some extreme shit. So I know, I, and man, I have to spend a I'm lot of my fucking stream disavowing thing. that shit and telling you to say I get it, man. I do. I know. I, you know. What I'm saying is that I do think that there will be so, – maybe it won't be so much, but there will be some blowback is what I'm saying. Hmm. So I, I'm going to ask a simple question. Uh, why is the policy prescription to little Timmy stop immigration and not like solve the inequities and the like oh, aggression I, and the frustrations that are building up? I don't think that that is the only thing. Like, um, I think, like I said, there's a lot of reasons I think that we need to stop immigration. Um, one of them is being that we are bringing oh, in but, a but lot of. But do you believe little Timmy is is one of the reasons why we should stop immigration? Um, yeah, it's one of them. Yeah. Okay, so why is and little I, Timmy a like a reason for for stopping well. immigration and not a reason for? Um, like working on the other aspects that I talked about before. No, I think you should do both. But th- it doesn't change the like am- the existing minorities within the country. It just th- th- do you okay? I'm gonna see if I can explain this in a better way. The implication right now is that mm-hmm. since we all believe, and you said this before, that no matter what, minorities are gonna be treated like shit in the United States of yeah. America. And we know that minorities exist now, and they're not white. So stands to reason then that they're 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 treated like shit right now in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. However. 
um like that's not used as like an uh like a specific like i suppose like an argument for like importing a bunch of people to shift that minority status away from non-white people towards white people however it is used as an argument to stop immigration when that minority status could be potentially filled by white people and what that sort of implies is that you fundamentally believe that minority status experienced by white people is in some ways more significant or more harmful than minority i do, like I do think it's probably going to be more harmful because again a lot of the minorities that we have in this country mm -hmm. have a history where people are going to be more sympathetic to them because of everything that they've gone through white people will not get that same like they won't get the same treatment they won't get the same kind of sympathy from people because of the, our history so i do think it's a and lot then there's white people, like white people to become the minority in this country <laughs> than any other minority right now sorry i didn't hear the last thing you said uh, i said i do think it's a lot i think it's scarier to have white people become the minority in this country than any other minority because you won't get the same kind of protections okay so this is this is like the 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 issue here is that i can point to like existing data within the disparate treatment and the racism and the harsh discrimination that is experienced by you know non-white americans today all across the united states of america and how harmful that is empirically what you can point to to demonstrate that you know the treatment of white people when they're a minority is going to be more harmful than that is social media posts and the three percent small minority of violent social protests at blm Okay, and you're downplaying that quite a bit because social media posts, social media in general, is literally affecting the minds of so many people, and it is so. But there is a reason. Try to minimize it like that is just not you're nothing. Uh... But there, there, at the end of the day, I recognize the significant power of social media. Otherwise, I wouldn't do what I do, right? But um, you know. It, if it was like that as as big of an influence as you're making it out to be then we would expect this to be exhibited in you know like actual like empirical demonstrable data or treatment or studies we on the see, outcomes of it like what? what what's an example of that we do we do see in general like you're seeing the rage like just like a lot of like those what's an example of that what's like a well, like, like, the, the, the nick sandman oh. nick sandman's a prime example social so media one getting person. something wrong along with cnn that's a, that's one if you want me to continue down again see this is the silly part i can point to studies i can point to data i can point to consensus you can point to individual people on social media you see, you see what the issue trying is to give you i'm trying to give you i i don't know i see i see you are the issue that you are saying that this will not happen to white people when they become a minority you acknowledge that when black people were the minority it happened to them that is the problem in your logic. But again, I'm not, I don't have logic trees. I'm not an academic, I'm a practitioner. I don't read theory, I do things in life. That's how I operate. And in real life, I can tell you what the streets are saying. The streets are saying, Timmy is not getting any sympathy. That's what the hood is saying. No, I'm sure. And if that was like a widespread attitude, you would be able to point to something like empirical, something broad, some form of consensus and not social media, not specific, like, you know, like one or two, like right. So you want to study? There. Sorry? Do you want a study? You want to study? I want something How broad. I want something something material. It was 94. The summer right? protest, so 97 percent of those were it peaceful. Matter, right? No, okay. no, it's 93. You're wrong. You're wrong. It's 93. This number one. It was like, if that's the case, like what you're saying, it was still a huge, huge, huge portion. They were all in cities. They were all in like, I mean, they were bad. Okay. 17 so maybe, people maybe died throughout the showing, BLM like maybe riots. The, the protest they're showing is in like maybe, uh, I don't know, smaller areas. I would like to 17 see. 17 people just... died, which is like, how many for, died for, on for January 6th? Of that oh, do you want to talk about and the, per, do you want to talk about, if you want to talk yeah. about the per capita deaths sure. between January 6th and the BLM riots, I promise you this is not an argument you want to take. What about the, yeah, uh, it is. It is. Okay. So hold on. Hold on. You can't claim okay, hold on. So three or four people died. Anymore. Hold on. Three or four people died during the Capitol Wrong. riot. How many people died Wrong. during the Capitol riot? One, Ashley Babbage shot by the post. Okay. Even if Brian it's one, Schick, even if it's one person. A show later, and okay. the other ones were fat. Sure. Fucking out of the All right, cool. sorry, Rose. Okay, I'm even sorry. if I, I even I if I buy into you. this conspiracy, I okay, I'm, even if I buy I'm into everything faith. you say, I'm bad faith. I'm, I'm sure you're okay. I'm even if I now. buy into I everything am. you say, and the and the, the per capita death rate for the January riots is one person. Imagine if you had that same per capita death rates for the BLM protests, like across the summer, you would see thousands and thousands and thousands of deaths as a result of that. Do because that's how many protests there were. Do it per hundred thousand. That this is not the argument you think you're making. Do you know what? Oh, okay. No, I don't. No. I, again, I told you I'm not an Wait, academic. Can you, can you explain that? So. Uh, per 100,000. I'm really curious. No, I can't. I, so that doesn't mean per capita? Per capita and per 100,000 are one and the same? 
Yeah, they they are. Oh, okay, yeah, he spoke. Okay, good one. So, so why didn't you just say per hundred thousand? Well, because I didn't necessarily just give a specific. I can just say per capita. It's a, it's the same thing. It has the same like meaning. Oh, they are. Okay. No problem. You're still streaming, right? I am still streaming. Yeah. Okay, so cool. so fundamentally, if that was true, what you were saying, if you know the the death rate or the rate of violence was similar between the January sixth, which is your example, and the BLM riots, you would see thousands and thousands and thousands of people dead uh, uh, as an effect of the BLM protests. Um, but you just simply don't see. It. You see nothing exactly. near they're that. They're dead or they're not dead. They, the anger and the rage it is coming out. Like you can see it coming You're out. You're saying Even that it's coming, but you, it you can't is. demonstrate it. You can't yes, demonstate it. You literally saw it. Like you saw. Meanwhile, it the billions of dollars later, the news telling you it's a mostly peaceful <laughs> protest. Uh, okay, I, a question: ninety-three percent is or is that not mostly peaceful? Yes or no? It's okay. I, 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 I want to answer this question. To, I want to I I answer still... this. Ninety-three percent is or is not is that not? Is it ninety-seven or ninety-three? Because you were wrong. We can go earlier. with whatever. I can go by your lower one. Ninety-three percent is or is that not the most? What? Yeah. Is ninety-three percent not the most of the protests? Yes or no? I don't accept. I don't accept the way you put. All right, good one, buddy. All right, what do you have to say? Yeah, like, and I want to see exactly where, um, how big the um the protests were in other places and what cities they were in and I, I would like to dive way more into that because i think that um that kind of also matters a bit have you driven into that no and i would like to okay so you're making arguments as if that would already agree with you when you yourself admit that you you, you don't know what that would look like at the moment no i want yeah i'm saying i want to look into and neither that. do you well i do know that the vast majority of them were peaceful and i'm yeah, asking you, for you, some no you had it wrong you had it wrong, number one. No. Yes or no, are the mass, vast majority of them peaceful, Todd? You're yes saying, no. okay, that this is the point. This is what I'm saying. Like, I, you're, you're sitting there and saying that, okay, yeah, they're 97%, and those are the numbers. But the, looking into those protests, looking into exactly how, like, how big they were, where they were, mm -hmm. that also can affect if, like, what you're saying with the 97%, because the media, okay, and I hate I can give you some more context, this, actually. You're going to love this, because I've looked into some of the stuff protect, you're talking about. Media does protect these minority groups as well. Okay. They frame, they're going to frame things in ways that is going to, um, you know, combat the narrative that like Fox News and all the other things that are going on. Like the one where you see them uh, sitting there saying, oh, mostly pre peaceful and there's like fires going on behind them. Yep. Like, I on. understand for like, uh, for, you know, the reptile brain conservative that might, you know, not make any sense. But if you look at the aggregate and you look at the statistics, then it does make sense with that. He's got a peaceful. study about that building. A good it one, was buddy. 97 you're, you're just you're coming in with the bangers here todd we really appreciate them but you, i can talk a bit more Brittany. so when it came to the destruction the violence on those you know the you know varying between you could say seven you know todd's estimate or three percent of the ones that went vi uh, that went you know violent if you look at love the footage from those situations what will you see happen who will you see be the instigators of the specific like the specific violence in a really significant amount of those cases you will see that it's white antifa kids coming from another yeah, city probably. coming in they're tearing shit up and this is probably. not the minority rage you're talking about this is about no, privileged white kids like you know no, doing I, dumb I, I shit. have no argument there yeah I, it seems like, like, like antifa self. people wait um uh, what's happening um it seems like yeah a lot of these antifa people are uh -huh. causing a lot of, and you know what they're probably and people are white i know that they are but i don't so i don't know what the hell they're doing with that shit. but there's a lot of white people that are also pushing a lot of anti-white rhetoric not thinking like that hey this is gonna backfire on you <laughs> okay so and you're once one again i'm i'm one of the people pushing anti-white rhetoric todd am i all right um kind of yeah kind of all right good one buddy um so i mean once again i just it's it's very frustrating for me personally that when i want to support my positions i can point to all these forms of like empirically and, and, and studied and like broad sort of phenomena that occur and illustrate that as a proof of like existing like animosity towards a specific right group of people I think that's just a ridiculous argument you're talking about okay like let's just look at these studies instead of like your lying eyes like we're seeing this stuff happen okay. we okay. literally we can go through this. just oh yeah well the studies say that this is gonna be uh no come on which one like, of those two do you think is more accurate the studies or think, your own no, personal because eyes? i think that studies can be manipulated my Eyes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Do you, what do you think is, is is more likely to be manipulated? Like academic studies that are peer reviewed and generally more broad, or your specific eyes and your media okay, content heard, and your interpretation? I think you can. I think you can make a study. 
fit whatever narrative you are wanting to push. That could be happening with anything. And it does happen because you can give me some kind of narrative and I will be able to find multiple do, studies. Do you think it happens studies. more with anecdotes or more with data? No, and I, think, I don't know. I think it happens with probably both. Data. <laughs> you think it happens like equally with, okay, let's not talk about Todd, but Brittany, do you think it happens equally with both? I don't know if it happens equally with both, but I'm sure it does happen with both. And I, you can't sit there and like tell somebody when they're seeing this with their eyes that this isn't like this isn't, for a study like, to prove it right now. That this isn't um the the road we're leading down. Um, you know what you're. I mean, if if this is like the I suppose like the standard or what's going on there, I don't. It must be really rough to be able to form any form like policy prescriptions from like your side of things from a broad perspective. It just seems like it really mostly boils down to like anecdotes for you guys personally. And the statement that you can find a study that proves anything is is absolutely by no means the case whatsoever. Um, of it no, what it, it isn't. Anything, I will be able to find it. <laughs> Do you want me to? Uh... Go ahead. Come on. Give a specific give example. Quick. Come on. All right, sure. Give Come me any... okay. Give me a study that proves that the majority of the BLM protests were violent. Go. Okay, hold on. I'll be right back. All right, I'll be waiting. And it looks like it was ninety three percent. So Todd was right. Mm -hmm. As always. <laughs> All right, I'm waiting for the study. Uh, here's something that says the myth behind BLM's peace, peaceful protests. Um, is that a study or is that an article? I don't know. I haven't had I haven't had time to like dive into all this stuff. Right. Like, well, I'm I'm, a, I'm waiting in excitement. I guess we only simply had to provide a study, fucker. Don't don't move the goalposts. No, I'm waiting for the study. I'm not moving any goalposts, dude. I'm already just chilling. Protests, um, one billion to two billion in shared property. Um, more than thirty people were killed and fourteen thousand people arrested. Um, okay, so there are only two. Well, the U.S. Crisis Monitor reports only two hundred and twenty locations where protests were violent, but does not admit that this work out at a rate of more that this works out at a rate of more than nine percent of the locations in which blm protests occurred um imagine your foreign tourists thinking of visiting 100 american locations would you still travel given an expectation that nine of those visits would expose you to violence is nine percent uh, the majority I'm, I'm just looking through this dude all right I'm down um the report describes 90% of the protests overwhelmingly peaceful and describes the other 7% as minuscule. Imagine if you interacted with 100 protesters. Uh, you're just reading the same thing. That's not what you're looking for. You should look for something else. Well, I'm trying to, I can't sit there and I can find stuff like right on the spot like this. All right, like, well, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to have to wait because you guys well, are not going to be able to find this. All right, so how about I'll I'll look through this stuff and I will send you something, okay? All right. Um, sure. So <laughs> I think so far in this, I can guarantee we have some efficient as fuck so, so you right need now. a study. You need a study. Well, you guys did that. You could find a study to prove literally anything. I gave you we'll a very to topical you. example we'll of this. We'll I'll, be we'll waiting, waiting, I'll be fucking waiting, man. I'll be fucking waiting. Five minutes. minutes. So, you got it. Join but this so far in this discussion, that that claim hasn't been validated by any uh, any stretch of the imagination. And you and you threw a fa false claim as well. So we're one for one. Your um, false claim. You know what? Mis mixing up ninety seven for ninety three is a hell of a lot different than completely doubting the entire validity of the. Yeah, you know, but if you were an theory. academic, you would want me to believe your ninety seven claim. But I knew it was wrong. No, nope, I, I invite criticisms, and I, I admit, I Todd, you were correct with that. I missed up. I mixed up the uh, the overall statistics with the specific Thank you. Michigan and you ones. You were correct about things, but we will dig into it about things. Yeah, yeah we'll you know, this is really literally intellectual honesty. Where I'm here, ready to say, you know what? I messed up these numbers, but you're just like, I guess you're correct on stuff. 
but you don't really want to concede what it is. You know, it's a bit struggle. Um, all right, well, but that's all right. We, well, I'll look through these I, I studies. Just all right, I'll look through these studies. I'll, okay. Um, and I will, I'll, I'll get you some studies. I do have to go because I have to get to dinner and all this shit. But um, we can we can pick up this conversation again if you want. All right, I'll be, I'll be, you know, uh, excitedly awaiting a study illustrating yeah. that the majority of the protests were violent. No, what, it, what a study will do is kind of pick apart the way the studies are being conducted as well. Um, okay, I'll just send it, send it to me when you take a look at it. All right, I will. All right. All right. Have well, a good night. You too, buddy. Bye, Rose. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Left-wing host, by the way. Jesus Christ.